Good evening and welcome to a very special episode of Trending at 10 p.m. with me, Vishnu Shom. On the program tonight, you would have heard about INS Arihan, India's first made in India ballistic missile submarine, having completed its first operational deployment. But tonight on this program, we try and bring you details of just what the Arihant is all about. What are naval nuclear deterrence achieves? Details of the nuclear tip missiles that the Arihant is armed with. How India built its nuclear reactor and the future of this submarine program. India's desire to build a ballistic missile submarine capability is several decades old. And what we are now seeing is the coming of age of what's the most sophisticated military program in our history. It's not been easy and the learning curve has been incredibly difficult. But it's clear that India is on a path that only the permanent five of the UN Security Council have been able to achieve so far. On this program, we have some of the finest nuclear uh, experts uh, in the country, some of the finest former Navy officers in the country, uh, submariners, and my colleague Palla Bagla, our science editor. Uh, Bharat Karnad, the strategic affairs expert with me, Rear Admiral Raja Menon, the former Vice Chief of Navy Staff Operations, a submariner himself. Admiral Arun Prakash joins us from Goa, somebody who has very, very closely uh, been looked, uh, has, has somebody who's very closely looked at this program in the past. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you very much for being with us. Admiral Prakash, in simple terms, what is the operationalization of Arihant mean? Well, um, as the Prime Minister told us, she's been out on her first deterrent patrol lasting a few weeks, I think, and returned home safely. It means a number of things. Firstly, that the submarine is in full working order, and some of us had heard that it had suffered a minor mishap last year, so all that is behind us. So the submarine and all her systems are go. Her crew is fully worked up. They're quite familiar with how to operate a nuclear reactor at sea and observe all the other safety precautions. Um, the standard operating procedures are in place. And above all, the Navy's um, long-range underwater communication system is working well. And that's quite an achievement. So all this put together means that the Arihant is now operational and ready for deployment on deterrent patrols as and when required. Um, and that means that she's got missiles on board. Um, we'll talk about the range later on, but she's got missiles on board which can be launched when the Prime Minister gives the command. All right. In fact, uh, before we carry on with this discussion, let's just take a look at what the Prime Minister said yesterday. Arihant, Bharat ke dushmano ke liye, shanti ke shatruo ke liye, ek khuli chetavni hai ki ve Bharat ke khilaaf कोई दुसाहस न करें अरिहंत की सफलता न्यूक्लियर ब्लैकमेल का माकूल और मुंह तोड़ जवाब है अब मिस्टर कर्नल लेट मी कम टू यू नेक्स्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ द वेरियस टेक्नोलॉजीज व्हिच हैव बीन डेवलप्ड इट्स नॉट जस्ट मिसाइल्स इट्स नॉट जस्ट द रिएक्टर इट्स द कमिंग टुगेदर ऑफ अ सिस्टम हाउ डज दिस ऑल वर्क टुगेदर Look, I think the most uh, important thing about the ATV program now, the SSBN program, is that uh, we have gone indigenous as far as uh, and has, have acquired the capability for uh, converting a design into an engineering design and then actually constructing it. And that's where I think Indian companies like Larson Tubro, that is uh, the primary contractor for putting things together, uh, have had, have acquired a great deal of experience. Uh, this, I think, is the most important thing. The platform, of course, is, as, Ad, as, as Ad, Admiral Arun Prakash said, it's a survivable, invulnerable platform for second strike, uh, which is going to be the ultimate deterrent that the country will have. But the most important thing, as far as I'm concerned, is the capability for indi indigenized production of submarines generally. Uh, what this means is, and I hope the Navy and the Indian government uh, sees it this way, that uh, we have now the capability in country for producing submarines. Uh, so we don't have to go abroad uh, on the 75I mm -hmm. conventional military submarine. When you can build a more complex nuclear powered submarine, uh, conventional submarine is much easier to craft at home. Uh, the only thing is 
we need to do is just buy a design and not the whole thing because other than very select technologies. So we should go the way the U.S. Navy is, has gone in the past. Not the U.S. Navy. Gone U.S. Navy completely. They don't have diesel electric submarines. Well, yes, that is a step up function. And I don't think the Indian Navy is there yet. Right. That would be the right thing to do for a maritime country such as ours. Uh, but the thing is, if you're going to go conventional nuclear, uh, conventional uh, you know, submarines, then we ought to be able to make them. Okay. When we make the more complex nuclear submarines, we can certainly uh, construct and produce fully a conventional submarine like the 75I program that the, Iron, uh, the Indian Navy has on its anvil. Um, Admiral Menon... Uh you know, as a submariner uh, uh, yourself, tell us about the incredible skill that would need to go into operating the nuclear reactor on board the submarine, the weapon system, and of course the ballistic missile weapon systems on board. Uh, what level of skill would the crew on board, the commanding officer, the first officer and the others, necessarily require to operate something like this safely for an extended period of time? This is an extremely complex engineering task and uh, the standards of engineering required to run a reactor underwater <clears throat> on a stop and go manner and uh, not on a stable platform requires an extreme degree of skill and uh, the personnel chosen for this are put through some very rigorous training for which the original tradition was set by Admiral Rekova in the United States Navy. He would choose the crew of the nuclear submarines personally. And uh, of course, we don't have Rekova now, but we have followed the same standards. And I'm told that both Bach and the Indian Navy have followed the same rigorous standards of engineering. Admiral Prakash, um you know, in terms of the ups and downs in this program, it's taken us several decades to actually get this right. Um, when you were Navy Chief, um, what, what was your sense that were we proceeding in the right direction? Did you see this all going in the right direction or were there slowdowns, were there problems? Is there something new you can share with us in terms of, of detail on the development process of the submarine? Well, as you know, it, it, it was and it still is a highly classified program, so one can't share all the details. But let's just say that the Indian Navy's vision was quite clear and the resolve was very much there. Every successive naval chief was quite clear that this was the, path, the way to go and we were going to pursue it. Now, the fact is that we did need a lot of advice and help from our Soviet and Russian friends. And that advice was often sporadic. Uh, things used to get stuck, perhaps a little bit of bargaining was going on and so on. But as far as the Navy was concerned, uh, we were very lucky. The DRDO, it was a DRDO yeah, project, but the, but the Navy was in the driving seat. And while these delays were taking place, we were quite uh, res resolute that we were going to pursue an indigenous route. And therefore, we set up a number of establishments whose sole task was to take little bits and pieces, go to the Indian industry, private, whether private or public, mostly it was small scale and small and medium scale and indigenize this submarine bit by bit by bit. So while it went and starts and stops, um, the Navy went ahead with its indigenization program so that when it came back on track around the middle of the last decade, uh, we were uh, ready with, with a lot of indigenous items which would go on board the submarine. So I think that's been our success, a major success, project management success of the Navy. And uh, the results are there for us to see. She's gone to see and come back safely and will continue to do so. Uh, Pallav, um, you were the only journalist uh, on board this vessel, which was actually uh, there to test the first launch uh, of, um, of an underwater, of a missile being fired underwater from a pontoon, I believe, on that occasion. The missile is called the K-15. It is thought to be in the, uh, the armament of this particular submarine. Um, tell us a little bit, about about the missile program because you know the the reason to develop a ballistic missile submarine is to have the ability to fire these missiles so how would did that happen through these decades on a parallel track uh, and it appears to be going fairly successfully 
Sure, you're, you're right, Vishnu. I was the only one who was in the Bay of Bengal when they tested the BO-5 missile. There is a lot of name changes which happened. It's a subterfuge which goes on. K-15, Sagareka, BO-5, K-4, all those names. They keep changing. DRDO kept changing it. Yes, I was on the 14th launch of the BO-5 missile. I was the only one in the, on the observation ship to watch that missile come out and to see a tranquil ocean and suddenly a missile comes out and then goes on to a target 700 kilometers away. Trust me, was an amazing sight. But before this launch, which was in 2013, uh, 14th launch, 13 launches had already taken place. Mm -hmm. And most of it were kept very, very secret. One last launch, I think the message needed to be sent out to the world that we have it ready and we were ready to tell the world is when we were handpicked and guided to the, into the Bay of Bengal. I still can't disclose the location from where we were taken. That was the kind of secrecy which was involved with it. But this whole program was done by the Defense Research and Development Organization. So the missile is done by the Defense Research and Development Organization and it's a nuclear tipped missile. Yeah. So the nuclear component comes from the Bhabha Atomic Research Center, the Dep uh, Department of Atomic Energy, when the two get mated, and I'm yep. told uh, on this particular trial, they carried the BO-5 missiles. And obviously, they, they were probably carrying it in full gear because it was a deterrent uh, uh, sortie right. in a way. Um, you know, you are talking about the BO-5 missile. It's called K-15 by some. There's the other missile as well. It's called uh, the K-4. Um, and, and that is what India in the interim period is looking to operationalize. It's a missile with a range of 3,500 kilometers. It's with the induction of this missile, the operationalization of this missile, that we would actually be able uh, to target most parts of China, which is essentially the primary objective of having this, uh, this nuclear deterrent. Uh, but before we, we, we speak a little bit more about that missile and, and, and the future of, of the missile and the submarine program, let's take a look at Pallav's report uh, from on board that ship uh, when the missile was fired and also the reactions of the scientists uh, on board, scientists who were actively involved in the process of developing it. I'm on a ship in the Bay of Bengal, a very secret mission, a mission where India launched its submarine launch ballistic missile, a successful mission. I have with me Mr. A.K. Chakravarti, who is the director of the Defense Research and Development Laboratory in Hyderabad, and also the father of this missile program. Dr. Chakravarti, what was the flight like and how was it successful? The flight was fantastic. It has uh, met all the requirements. Nothing better is possible and uh, accuracy of terminal accuracy is just fantastic. It's a little embarrassing also at the terminal accuracy. But a very fantastic flight right from the beginning and you had a nice campaign. Right on the morning uh, everything went off flawless. Uh, we had uh, many people working here from uh, various departments and we have worked with the uh, fantastic team spirit and the coordination and the ultimate result is superb. Uh, you are saying Arihant in a state of operation? I think so. So, so, so the missile has been mated with the uh, with the submarine, and it's uh, it's now roving in the seas. I don't think to that extent, but otherwise it is mated and tried. Uh, have you fired from the platform INS Arihan platform the SLBMs? Yeah, from stationary as well as from that also we have tried. Successfully, obviously. Oh, outstanding. All right, um, a look over there at, uh, at, uh, at, at the reactions coming in, uh, the, the, the genuine sense of almost disbelief that, look, we've actually managed to do it. But since then, there's been so much more that has been developed. Now, the reason, one of the reasons why this is an uh, extremely, a fairly extraordinary development is because there are just a handful of countries which have mastered the art of building, engineering, and operating ballistic missile submarines. These are the most sophisticated uh, weapon systems which have been devised in the history of mankind. Um, and let's just play out a couple of images of some of the submarines being operated uh, by some of the other countries. China has uh, deployed 
its newest class of submarine, the ballistic missile submarine, the Type 94. You can see that on your screen. Uh, this is a submarine which obviously has ramifications for India, indeed for China's adversaries such as the United States. The French have operated the Le Triomphant class of ballistic missile submarine. The Royal Navy presently has the Vanguard class, uh, which has been in service for more than a decade. They are looking to replace it uh, with another class in the near future. Russia has a brand new class of ballistic missile submarine. It's called the Bore class. Uh, one of these, at least, is already in service. And the United States, for uh, a couple of decades, has been operating ever-improving variants of its Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine. And to add to that list now is India's own Arihant class. Um, Admiral Menon, um, Arihant is number one. There is, already, there is also Arighat, which is number two. That's, we, we are told, already in a fairly advanced stage of testing. That's right. Uh, but we, we also have what's called uh, the S-4 and the... Uh, and the, I beg your pardon, the, the S2, is it? S, S4 star. S4 and the S4 star. These are uh, unnamed at this stage. Those will be substantially larger submarines, right? So it's a process of evolution. Yeah, it is a process of evolution. The assembly line is running. <clears throat> so we took, eight, uh, well, 18, 20 years since overt nuclearization for the first submarine, but the second submarine will come out much quicker and the second and third and fourth will come out much quicker. And I want to say this, that all countries before us have gone in for a nuclear powered submarine without ballistic missiles initially. We are the only country that have gone in for a nuclear powered submarine with ballistic missiles. And that is because we wanted to field an underwater deterrent as soon as possible. In that sense, we are path breakers in this.